Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a fall inspired meal prep. I was away this past week because I had some technical difficulties with my editing system, but I'm back at cooking and filming and uploading for you guys. So I am really excited to get all of these great fall recipes out to you and everything is linked in the description box as usual. And just like my last video, I went ahead and made some fall inspired inspired stickers to show you the recipes that are gluten free friendly, dairy free friendly, keto friendly and family friendly. You guys really seem to enjoy that in my last video and it was really helpful to you. So the first recipe that I decided to make was some apple bread and I was so excited to cook this day just because all of these recipes have great smells and scents that go with them and so obviously cinnamon and pumpkin pie spice we'll be using today so one thing that you need to do is roast some pecans to go on top of this bread and a quick little tip I have for you is to roast them in your air fryer if you have an air fryer and I just went ahead and put some spray um, cooking spray on top of them and put them in the air fryer for a few minutes until they were nice and toasted and then I went ahead and made a double batch of this so I actually mixed this recipe up twice I decided to mix it individually just because it's a whole loaf and I wanted to make sure I wasn't unevenly dumping the batter into the loaf pans so I mixed it up twice and this could possibly be gluten-free I did not try it with gluten-free flour I did use regular flour but I do think it could be made gluten-free so if you try it with gluten-free flour let me know in the comments either way this recipe was absolutely delicious my daughters really raved over this and it turned out really well I also felt like it didn't go flat like some breads do it kind of held its shape and it was nice to just slice up and to put this in the freezer all I did was slice everything and then I laid them flat inside of some gallon Ziploc bags one layer at a time in each bag and then I froze them flat in the freezer that way I could pull out as many slices as I wanted to um, at a time for breakfast or snacks. This next recipe was something completely different, a little bit of a wild card, but it is gluten-free and it is dairy-free. I didn't even realize this was a dairy-free recipe until I was editing this and realized that I didn't use regular milk, I did use almond milk. So I just came up with these pumpkin bacon dippers so basically i just made a great pumpkin pancake recipe and i did put it inside of a ziploc bag which you'll see here in a second but before i get to that i did cut my bacon strips in half and fried them and you don't want to fry them too hard you don't want them to be too crispy since you will be frying them again inside of the pancake batter but just cooked through enough that they kind of aren't raw. You don't wanna have them raw inside of there. So while your bacon strips are cooking up, you can go ahead and mix up your pancake batter. And I wanted to also make a note that this could be very keto friendly. There is a lot of pumpkin pancake mix that is a keto friendly mix. So I would just search that on Pinterest or Google. And then you could go ahead and put the bacon strips inside of that and then dip them into some keto friendly syrup. Again, a really good way to freeze a quick breakfast. I'm all about quick breakfasts, and I love to reheat these in my air fryer. It's always my question I get is how do you reheat things? So I'm trying to do better at making note of how I reheat each item. So this took a little trial and error. I kind of had to play around with how much batter to put underneath of each piece of bacon, and I realized that a little went a long way with these. And I did actually put my batter into a Ziploc bag and to store it or hold it in between batches of frying these up, I just sat the bag inside of that bowl as you saw there and it was really, really simple and these were super delicious.
Okay, so this recipe is keto friendly, it's dairy free, gluten free, and your family will love it. I wanted to give a good fall twist on my breakfast casserole. You all know that I really like to make this about once a month in a big sheet like this and cut it up and freeze it. So I decided to make it a fall inspired dish by adding in some butternut squash. So what I did is I diced it up first, I added a little bit of um, avocado oil and I put it on a sheet and roasted it before putting it in with the breakfast casserole. Along with that I did some sweet little peppers and another little tip is if you have little ones in the house that don't really like peppers and onions. I feel like my girls love these peppers so much better. They're not quite as thick in the skin, and if you cut them in small pieces, they're very unnoticeable, plus they give a really good flavor to whatever you're putting them into. Okay, to do a cookie sheet this size, I believe I used 25 eggs. I guess if you wanna slow it down and actually count, but I think that there was 25 eggs, and it really all depends on how much other ingredients you're adding into the pan as well. So after I had roasted up the squash, and to be honest, I'm not sure how long I roasted them for. I feel like maybe at 400 for 35 minutes, something like that, just to get them cooked through really well. I put some shredded potatoes potatoes on the bottom of the pan after I sprayed it and then I added in some sausage and I did saute the onions and peppers up just to get them good and soft so that my little ones weren't biting into raw um, onions and peppers because they would not think that's okay and then I put in the sausage and I put the squash on top after I dumped the eggs in now last month I did put a lot of cheddar cheese on this this month I decided to go without cheese to give you guys kind of a dairy-free option and I feel like the topping of the squash really took a nice replacement of the cheese After it had cooled, I went ahead and cut it into portion sizes that I wanted. And the nice thing about having those potatoes on the bottom is it helps to keep the little serving sizes together. And then I stored these in gallon bags in the freezer. So this freezer prep idea isn't really fall friendly, but I wanted to make these up anyways. I guess you could get some apple bacon or some ham or turkey and kind of throw in a little bit of a Thanksgiving twist on these if you wanted to, but you can just get some gluten-free English muffins and cut them open. And then I'm just putting ham and cheese. And my little tip with doing these breakfast sandwiches is to make sure you put a slice of cheese on the top and the bottom. I feel like when I reheat them, they just melt together so much better so I did that some ham and then I put some egg in the middle and then what I like to do is get these out of the freezer and open them up and have them kind of open faced inside my air fryer to toast them and warm them up and they get all nice and melty and delicious and obviously you can add in things like ketchup and mayo and any other toppings that you want to put on it but it's all ready to go and this is another thing that you could do a lot of different options you could even make these dairy free if you wanted to by doing a cheese substitute or something like that. And then I like to use the press and seal wrap to just wrap them individually so they're easier to grab out of the bag, out of the freezer. Okay, so we love baked oatmeal in our house and I feel like it's such a good substitute 
for the oatmeal packets because you can put eggs and milk and other ingredients in them and they're just so much more healthy than the oatmeal packets that are basically sugar and oatmeal. <laughs> so I did a great pumpkin spice baked oatmeal and this was a huge winner in our house. Everybody loved it. The recipe is very, very simple. It is gluten-free as long as you use gluten-free oats and gluten-free ingredients and um, it is all also dairy free as well and then I tripled the batch for this pan size I know that's another question I get a lot is how many times I um, multiplied the recipe for that pan size So that is the inspiration I have for you guys today. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope that this gave you a lot of motivation to get meal prepping for yourself, especially during this fall season. And we really enjoyed these recipes. Don't forget to check out the links in the description box if you're looking for anything that you see in my video. And I will see you guys in my next video.